is Wallace Lake, an hour and a half south of Port Macquarie, where I flew into last night. This is Brett Wilson, and Brett, this morning you've taken me to a weed bed in the middle of nowhere where you think there might be some brim. Yeah, it actually appears like it's the middle of nowhere, but uh, yeah, very extensive weed beds and little holes and stuff like that. A lot of prawns and crustaceans and bait fish. And it's the place to be. Now, I say we're going to lure the brim out. Yes. I assume we're going to lure them out with some lures. What's the plan? Uh, yeah, we'll start off with some surface lures. It's actually very shallow here and uh, a lot of prawn activity in the lake at the minute. So some small surface lures before that sun gets too high is uh, the way to go. Well, I was up before the sun was up. It's time to catch a fish. Let's go. How good was that? I actually saw the take, Bredo. Eh? Well, yeah, it's that pause. You really got to, they love that long pause. The longer the better sometimes. Yeah. They just sit under it, sit under it, sit under it, sit under it. And the slightest little twitch they think it's getting away and, uh, and bang. And he's only a very tiny fish. But how's that? A brim on a popper. I think Brett summed it up beautifully when he said it's all about the pause. Beautiful and early in the morning. Look at that for a cute little fish. And it's easy just to work away, go whack, 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 whack. And as soon as I slowed it up a bit, he'd come up off the weeds and ate that popper just sensationally. Beautiful start to the day. Well, I turn, <laughs> I turn around to see your fish. You stopped whining. And I stopped whining, and once again, the paws worked. As I was going to say, mate, it's all about the paws. Yeah. Ooh, that's, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> yeah, we're only fishing in like two foot of water here, so. I'll get that net from under yeah, your feet, mate. Yeah, please, light loader, so that'd be great. So how cool is that now? You're using a little surfacing that zigs all over the place. Yeah. You're winding it in, get the fish fired up. You physically stop to look at me. It's just sitting on the surface. Yeah, and he's eating it next to the boat, pretty yeah. much. He's a beautiful looking fish, and I reckon there's something in that for everyone. If you're going to try this style of fishing, don't be scared to let the lure just sit there, because it is when they eat it, isn't it? It is when they eat it. You can have a look at the colour of that fish. You can see he's been living on this weed for a while. He's quite dark, but they're real bronzy back. Tell That's you what, mate, fish. he'll be dark on you. Yeah. It's a nice fish, isn't it? That is a yeah. lovely fish. And so this, this weed bank fishing's really fired up the last few years, mate? It certainly has. And what they call flats fishing. Yep. You know, you know shallow, rubbly ground, uh, weed beds especially, I mean, you know, low tide, a lot of these weed beds are actually exposed. So any fish that are here, they're here for a reason, and that's to have something to eat. So it's probably not a bad place to come. Well, we're helping them out with the thing to eat bit. That is just quality. Oh, I actually saw him come out of the water. But you did, you did the right thing. A lot of people, when they, when they get a surface strike, the first thing they do is just strike. And it, you, you do have to wait a few seconds, let the lure go under, let the tension take up, and, and then hit them. Like, when you do get a surface strike, you do have to wait. And it's so hard to do. Oh, man, I saw him come out. I let him go down. <laughs> and then I just, I didn't go too hard, but oh, and he still fell out. It's so hard to do. And they're coming up and eating these things off the surface. Look at that. It's even a little blade on the back that whizzes around. It's all about technique. And technique, Brett's explained to me very carefully, it's just about getting a long cast using very long rods. And you just gotta get that lure really working across the surface. And then when you stop it, that's when the fish eat it. And that is so disappointing. Oh, right there. The wonder of television. While you're on that short break, I had a nana nap, an egg and bacon roll, a fantastic coffee. Now, Brett, what is the plan? Because there's a bit of wind happening. Well, yeah, a bit of wind, but that will work in our favour, mate. I'm going to teach you the art of whiting on surface lures, believe it or not. If I hadn't done it once before, and when I say <laughs> once, I mean once only, I wouldn't believe you. And this is the spot? This is the spot, mate. Of, uh, while you're having your nana nap, I come out for a pre-fish, mate, like, you know, all good guides do, so. So you know what I always say about you, Brett? You're a team player. <laughs> That's it, mate. Let's have a go. Oh, he's dropped it! Oh, he's still one on it! Oh, 
Oh, you could tell they were fired up, couldn't you? Yeah. They were different than the other fish. They actually wanted that lure. Yeah. Then they ate it and the hooks fell out. This is insane fishing. Who'd have ever thought that catching whiting could be this exciting, Brett? Yeah, it is a lot of fun, <laughs> especially in this clear water. You can see everything that's going on. Mate, when you've got five fish packing around your lure, all having a crack, <laughs> and you can tell they're hot for it, yep. they just get that look. That is so wrong. They come around in front and double back and come up from underneath and... Oh, yes! That's got him! <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? He just went doop, right in front of the rod You tip. know what the funny thing was? I was looking the other way and I heard Joel, oh, a disappointment. <laughs> I turned around and seen him go doop. It. That was gold. I actually uh. looked around just saw him go doop. Oh, that is so much fun, mate. It is good fun, isn't it? Now, he, he tracked that for quite some time. He's a good fish. Yeah, he's OK. He's quite a standard fish for up here. Now, technically, are these known as sand whiting? Yeah, sand whiting or yellowfin whiting. And that's a good fish for a yellowfin whiting? Oh, yeah, that's about an average size. Um, 27 centimetres legal length, but uh, yeah, that's about an average size for up here. You know one thing I've noticed about the sand whiting, as opposed to our King George whiting, which I get in Melbourne, these fish seem to have a really big head for their body. Yep. Like, how's the size of the head on that? Yep. Nice and slender. Yep. And a very fit fish. Obviously, you can see the current. That's why the, the, the waves are standing up. So they're a very, very fit fish for, for swimming in that current all day long. Well, at least we now have a close look at what they look like. There's water on the lens, which means we're catching fish. Whiting fishing, whoever thought it would be that cool. That's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> oh, we've just changed a tape and a battery, and while we've been doing that, we've had up to 10 whiting following our popper at a time. And as Brett just said, while the camera was turned off, everything is against you here in the fact that surface fishing for whiting, it's hard to get the hook up, it's hard to entice the fish to actually eat it in the first place. But it, I've got fish on my lure now, it's just worth the persistence because it's so good actually seeing the bite as opposed to having a bit of worm on the bottom and seeing nothing but your rod tip go dunk dunk. Even when you're not catching fish, you're still having a great time. It is just wrong town. And one of the surprising things is, you know, although it doesn't look it here, we're pulling these fish out of six foot of water. It's unbelievable. Mate, it looks about two foot deep. Yeah. And it looks more like the Florida Keys than uh, <laughs> Tun, Curry or Foster, let me just say that. Oh, there's fish on there again. Come on, eat it. Eat it. They're all over it. Eat it. Look at them, Brett. Look at them. Come on. Come on, boys. Eat it. Oh, oh me too. Yep. Yep. Look at him in that school there. Look You've got one fish, they're still around your lure. Yeah. There's one. The other fish have now disappeared. Yeah. He's just doing the big rolls, yeah. mate. <laughs> he's not doing a lot. He's not a bad fish either. Now, oh. I just want to have, show you something here because this is something that surprised me from day one. Have a look at that. He's actually eaten that lure. So, you know, it's not a reaction bite or, or anything like that. They're actually eating these and lures. And he's eaten every hook on that three yep. level. Yep. So for a downturn mouth, the bottom feet are all eyes in the top of the head, all the rest of it. I've got one word that, it, that sort of uh, fits in with what you're just saying, mate. What's that? Not. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, but it works. Oh, I and love it's it. fun. It's not fun. <laughs> you reckon we're having fun? Turn it up. I'm out here working, trying to earn a living, put my kid through college. You're unreal, you Blake. Yes, got him. Got him? Yep. Oh, it's all happening. Oh, mate. Oh, hello. Hello, what have we got here? Ah, oh, maybe not. I don't, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a bit windy. <laughs> what have I got here, a little tailor? Yes, yeah, little Ron and Val. Little Ron and Val, there you go. Well, there's Taylor mixed in with them. Tiny fish, just a bit of bycatch to keep us happy. And this is a sensational session. Taylor's back, Whiting's back, and we're back. Little things can make a big difference in fishing. That's the little silver pop I was using. It's about 10 millimetres bigger than Brett's lure. That is more the size I reckon I need. That's a little Yozuri Eba. I think the difference in size will make the difference in my fishing. Yes! yes. Got him! Oh, you come oh. on! Oh, I got another one! <laughs> come out of one's mouth and went into another. The first one fell off. That is just so cool. <laughs> you know it's firing when that happens, don't you, mate? Man, that is wrong town. <laughs> I'm speechless, and that is a very rare occurrence, mate. <laughs> very, very rare. And he's actually come up and hit that so hard, he's taken that literally out of his mate's mouth. 
And that is whiting fishing, if I've ever seen it. Look at that for a beautiful fish. And how's the sun on those flanks? And they call them sand whiting. How well do they disappear in the sand, mate? Very much. They just seem to appear. They just seem to come up out of nowhere and climb all over the lure. They're not there before you Good. cast. Oh, I managed to catch myself too. We're killing them. Ghosts of the flat. That's what they are. That is just wrong. So we've made a move to the bridge that joins the two towns of Tuncurry and Foster and my small lure, Brett. First cast, winding your rear. Second cast, winding your rear. And then one ate it and then another one ate it. So I think it was worth the change. It's always worth the change. There's a few sand holes there. I'm going to pin that in over there. Give it a bit of a flick. I'm only casting about 15 metres from the boat here because the fish are coming up out of these sand holes. You can see the difference in the coloration of the water there. They're holes, there's weed in the bottom of them, and around those holes is beautiful sand, and they are the holes where the whiting are hiding. <laughs> Got him! Brett was actually repositioning the boat with the 150 E-Tech, and that 150 is actually a hoe, which means high output. They... G'day, buddy! And they are so quiet, you can actually catch whiting on the flats with a 150 horsepower engine going. That is mind-blowing, only in two foot of water. And just look at that fish. Whiting on a popper, I never thought I'd see the day. That is gold. Oh! You little beauty. I was just watching an old mate over there catching a fish, Brett, and then out of the corner of my eye, I see your popper get absolutely snaffled. <laughs> uh, yep, once again. You realise you're making it very difficult for us today, don't you? Why is that, mate? Because we're catching too many fish, it's very hard to get all the shots we need. <laughs> OK. So can you just slow it down a little bit? We don't need this many. OK. Good no man. Oh, look, there's whining all over this. It's just... Ah. There they mate. Everyone's honking their horns. <laughs> very happy place, New South Wales. If you ever come to Foster, everyone will wave, won't they, mate? That's it. Hi. Hey, can I have that one for my dinner? Yeah, why not? Because yeah. I love whiting. Yes. And one of the reasons we go fishing is to actually get a feed of fish. We're basically sorting through them, picking the ones we want, let the little ones go, maybe let the big ones go, but he is a keeper. Yeah, he's perfect size for eating, yeah, for sure. Even though you might not think that this is very technique sensitive and there's a nice fish, <laughs> it's all about just keeping the rod tip down low and as you can see, Brett just shake, 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 shake. And what that does, it really fires the popper up. And when I say fires it up, it gets it working. And the more you can work that popper, the more chance you've got of getting a fish. And the other thing that blew me away, Brett, we're using 15 pound leader for whiting. Why is that, mate? We use a short leader. Normally when you're fishing with braid, you use a full rod length. Yep. But when you're uh, using the poppers for whiting, you use no more than two feet yep. of anywhere over 12 to 14, 15 pound leader. It helps the lure track dead straight and just keep blooping the whole way along, which is extremely important. You normally pause when you're Twitching um, poppers. Well, on whiting, you just—it's just a continuous bloop. Do not stop. Well, we're breaking every rule in the fishing rule book that I knew before, but it's working because that's a whiting, and I'm very excited. I don't know if you knew that, but I am. What an amazing way to cap off what has been a sensational day. A pigeon pair of whiting—they are just beautiful fish, and I've got to say. I do a lot of fishing. I've enjoyed today immensely, mate. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, isn't it? I mean, I do a lot of this by myself, but it's twice as much fun with a mate, let me tell you. It's awesome. And one of the great things about fishing is coming out and trying something different. And for Brett, to be able to come out and show someone how to do a new technique, it's a pretty good feeling, isn't it? It is, it is. Actually, um, I've showed my father, who's, uh, you know, in his late 60s, and he's right into it. I've showed my younger brother, and. You know, now I've showed you, it's good fun. It's all good. The only thing left to do is take these whiting home, fill them and eat them. Yummy. If you want to know more about the techniques of whiting on poppers, send me an email. Go to ifishtv.com.au. I'll forward it to Bretto. He'll answer your questions and you'll have a pigeon pair like this. <laughs> I'm so excited, I nearly fell in. <laughs> <laughs>